Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Baron and we are on the Gathering Dust Bar. There are lots of dust here, so let's talk to them. What is that? The bar is made from a green stone that seems to evaporate any liquid that touches it. Let's talk to the zombie worker first. This female corpse is dressed in a heavy burlap shirt covered with food and wine stains. Her lips have been stitched closed and her arms and legs are wrapped in several layers of bandages. The bandages seem to have been soaked in pres preservatives to keep the corpse fresh. As a result, the corpse's rotting order has been replaced with an equally repulsive vinegar spell. Um, <clears throat> I can't do anything with that. As you turn away, you notice Mort is staring at you. Eh? Eh? What is it? Did you see the way that cadaverous beauty was staring at me? Morty's teeth chatter as if... As in anticipation, she was looking for some lucky cutter to thaw her coffin. Please don't start this again. Morty ignores you and becomes thoughtful. I don't really mind the attention actually. It's just that I like to be seen as something more than just a skull, you know. I have feelings that go beyond my base animal instincts. I want courtship. Not some fortnight fling around the mausoleum. <coughs> Morty, you are a skull. Nobody can help you help but see you as a skull. Accept it. Yeah, well, I may be just a skull, but I've got a big heart. Actually, you don't have one of those. What? Were you dumped into my life to spit on my dreams and aspirations? Fine, be that way then. I don't have a heart, but I do have a soul. Well, actually, I'm betting you... Forget it. Let's go. Done. So, who are you? Just a regular dustman? You see a somber pale-faced dustman in black robes. He's staring, staring silently into his drink. Greetings. The dustman looks up. Yes, can I ask you some questions? Not at this time. The dustman becomes silent and turns back to his drink. Farewell then. Hey, what's, what about you, zombie worker? The female cops is dressed in a beauty burlap shirt covered with food and... Hey, it's the same actually. Okay. Let's talk to Zir the skeptic. As you approach, the elderly woman turns and stares at you. La. Look who is come a-calling on Sirte, death's dearest son. She looks you up and down and shakes her head in disbelief. By every power and its mother, boy, what crypt did you crawl out of? I'm fresh from the mortuary, actually. That's so. Sir raises an eyebrow. Warm my ears to hear you gave that place the love, though. Not much of a watering hole for one who isn't relieving themselves. She sniffs. Tch. Too many cobwebs and dusty mines. You don't like the mortuary? Aren't you a dustman? A dustman? I suppose. Sears stiffs. No, sniffs. Tch. I've seen enough sand pass through the hourglass while wearing these robes. This body is almost ready to pay the ferryman. She chuckles, but there's not much mirth in it. Are you afraid of dying? Of course I am, boy. Who isn't? She frowns and glances around. Well, except dustmen. They're not afraid because they've been swallowing so much of their own bad droppings over the decades. They've blinded themselves into thinking that death is some kind of release. <coughs> so what sparked this crisis in faith? She shrugs. Life, I suppose. I, uh, she frowns. Ha! Never you mind. I won't bore you with these niggling details. I'd like to know, actually. Oh, would you? She looks at you skeptically. How old? Uh, you'd take me for a boy. Let her down gently. Not too old. She's not. Well, you're wrong. I'm really old. Now, I've spent most of my long years teaching dustmen. I've seen many dustmen whelps grow within our order, taught them the ways of the faction, kept the face and prepared the tenants of the faction. She frowns. And so on and so on. No questions, no doubts. This life was merely an antechamber that led to the true death. What happened? Well, a half month back I went sick with the fever, she sighs. I thought it was the end. It, uh, it rattled my cage. How? Her face becomes a stone. There's something about having your faction members circle around your deathbed like a pack of pale-faced ghouls. 
nodding agreeing that your suffering and dying is all for the best. Oh, Seer is so fortunate. She shall soon be relieved of the burden of life. Burden of life? That's when it struck me. That? That there's something, a queer expression comes over her features. Addled about not appreciating your, appreciating your life. The dustman keeps saying that life is misery and suffering, is it? That we should be happy to pass on into oblivion. Should we? She shakes her head. Questions, questions, and precious few answers. It doesn't sound like you believe in the dustman philosophy anymore. I suppose I've got a swarm of doubts all buzzing in my skull. She rubs her temples. Hard to get them all to be quiet sometimes. They need to be fed some answers and I haven't got them all worked out yet. What will you do? To be square, boy, I don't know. Suicides. That's the problem with doubt. I can't even trust that what I'm feeling is true, or if I'm scared of death only because of my brush with the fever, or even what I should do. Is this a parting thing? I don't know. <coughs> oh well, what do we do here? So we could strengthen her beliefs in the Dustman philosophy. Or we could say this, well, she should um, throw it aside. I, I don't believe this test of your belief bullshit. Well, if you believe in the Dustman philosophy, this line of thought would be solid here. At the core of the Dustman philosophy is that this life is one of pain. It is a weapon that life uses against the soul to keep it anchored to its existence. Do not let this brush with the fever break your Dustman belief so. Time will heal these doubts. What happened? 500 experience points. Syria st Siri stares at you then not slowly. Maybe so, maybe so. She frowns, her face wrinkling up in concentration. I'll have to chew it over some more. You should, it's no small matter. Lana, enough of me rattling on about me woes. My woes. Seer stares at your scars. You look like you've shared a few handshakes with death yourself. Hasn't that changed your views somewhat? Doesn't it make you appreciate life a bit more? Well, my condition is unique. Let's give her the truth. I woke up in the mortuary. I think they mistook me for a corpse and were prepared to bury me. The strange thing is, I actually had died. I think I actually had died and got better. Siri blinks. You're rattling my coffin. It's true. Strange are the ways of the plains, and I have seen too much to throw any tale out with the wash. She studies her face. If it's, it's if it is if it's true, why does it happen? All I know is I woke up in the mortuary with no memory and covered with enough wounds to kill me three times over. Now don't be saying that born too loud. She glances around, most peculiar. Never heard of anything like that. Shame about the memories. Do you have any idea why this happens? Nay, not a one. Never knew anyone who's who death wouldn't take until now. Well, perhaps I could ask you some other questions. Questions, eh? Well, you can ask. Siri looks at you with a steely eye and smiles. Crypt crawler. <laughs> I didn't crawl out of any crypt. She frowns. Her face wrinkling like a crumpled parchment. Right then, what coffin did you crawl out? She mumbles. One of those shoddy splint coffins at Hamry's, most like. Gives corpses splinters, I hear, she sniffs. That boy has not been worth a clipped copper since his father died. Who is Hammerus? Hammerus is a coffin breaker, pardon, coffin maker, in the lower ward. Inherited the shop when his father died, much to the shame of every corpse needing a coffin, crypt, or tombstone in sigil. What happened to his father? Those ears, those ears just for show, boy? He died, she mumbles. 
His son talked him to death, most likely. That boy's tongue doesn't stop rattling. I'm surprised he doesn't shake his head loose from his shoulders. Uh, okay. Let's not insult her. I didn't crawl out of any crypt. I didn't crawl out of a coffin either. Um, she smiles, revealing a row of uneven teeth. All right, boy. What sarcophagus did you crawl out? Off, she stops and chuckles to herself, just ribbing you, boy. No harm meant. You do look like death's own, though. I should, I'm fresh from the mortuary. Okay, we already had that. Um, I wanted to ask you about some of the dustmen in particular. No harm in it. Who's on your mind? What can you tell me about Mortai? Mortai? Ha, I thought you were going to ask about the dustman, she spits. There's no dustman who's less a dustman than that jinx-smacking bone box rattling legwood. What do you mean? Mortai is so anxious to impress his batters by getting the most dead contract signed that I wonder if he'll even if he'll ever be a dustman. I don't understand. He's eager to get contracts signed, boy. He's concerned about his reputation. He's thinking of his career in the dustman. That alone says it all. Yeah. I understand. Actually, actually, I do understand, but let's pretend to be stupid. Because dustmen are about having no emotion, no uh, expectations. And if he's eager, well, he's not a real dustman. It's sad that passion kills. She snorts. For dustmen, it's the opposite. Passions keep you alive. And if you can't strip yourself of passions, whether eagerness, greed, or ambition, then you're doomed to never truly die because life will always hold a piece of you. I understand. Actually, I met a scrap named Dahl in the mortuary. Do you know him? <coughs> Dahl? He was my instructor in philosophical arts during my early training at the mortuary and a crusty fool to boot. He's ill, so my ears tell me. I bet he'll even bore death with his presence. Is he dying? Sicker than the spotted dog he is. Not much sand left in the hourglass for him. I'm at the guide at the mortuary, Suego. Do you know him? That boy used to be a regular around here. Don't know what happened to him. Could be he was shaken up after his friend died. Explain. One of his friends was killed in the hive a few weeks ago. Torn apart by rats. She shakes her head. Messy business. Has Suego always been a guide at the mortuary? No, only for the past few months, uh, at least, at last I heard. He was just sent off for some missionary duty, but I don't know where. Interesting. One of the embalmers in the mortuary, Ivine. Do you know her? Who? A strange young woman, poor eyesight, near death, talons for hands. She shakes her head. Maybe she's a new initiate, I've never seen her. Um, that's probably all the dustmen we know right now. Have you seen a journal recently? I'm still missing mine. <laughs> Come on. What does it look like? No idea. If you don't know what it looks like, how do you expect to find it? I'm beginning to wonder that myself. I had some other questions. I'm searching for a man named Ferret. Have you seen him? Siri's face crumbles into a frown. That dog. He is the worst of the collector's lot. I hear he has his kip set up somewhere in Ragpika Square, many streets west of the mortuary's gate. Dangerous place though. Some of those collectors aren't patient enough to wait for folks to die so they can sell them for jink. Collectors? They're vermin that scavenge the bowels of the hive for bodies to sell to the dustmen. Make a living off the dead. A motley breed. Makes you ashamed to share the same city with them, she says. At least they keep help the streets clean. Okay, that's pretty much all we can do right now. Maybe we can talk to her later after we have met a few more dustmen. Ah oh, well, nothing to do with the zombie workers. We talked to you already. And if you don't have a name, you will probably not talk to me. That's cool though. Yeah, there are enough people with names. What's up with you? Um, nothing apparently. Oh, a zombie bodyguard. The zombie gazed at you with vacant eyes. His lips have been stitched closed and bandages are wrapped several places around his body. 
The faint smell of alcohol emanates from the corpse. Nothing to be done here. A skeleton worker. Mm, nothing to be done here too. So, you are a Morik. Let's talk to you then. You see a heavy set man with dark skin and grim features. He is dressed in dustman robes and is regarding you with a stony gaze. Greetings. You have the look of one lost. The man's voice is like stone settling. Did the wind send you or are you here with purpose? Who are you? I'm a Morik Factotum, an initiate of the fourth circle. Is this your bar? If you measure ownership in copper, this is not my establishment. If you measure ownership in spirit, it is mine. He pauses as if trying to emphasize a point. The dustmen here are my students. They are under my protection. Can I ask you some questions? The monk waits. Didn't we do that already? Yeah, whatever. Can you tell me about the dustman faction? Dustmen seek the true death. Some call it oblivion, but this is incorrect. To, du to dustmen, the true death is freedom from the chains of the false life. False life? This life has many. This life that many cling to with their emotions is a false existence. As long as one clings to it, they will continually be reborn into it. One must divest themselves of emotion to escape this cycle. I see. Can you tell me how your faction is organized? Dustmen are organized into five circles. The fifth circle is made of the lowest rank of dustmen, initiates. The first circle is comprised of the highest ranking dustmen, the ruling body of our faction. <coughs> I don't like to join the dustman faction. Can you tell me about the dead contracts? If you decide to join the dustman faction, I will hear your request. Uh, no. Um, I have come here in search of a journal. These eyes have seen no journal. Perhaps your search will take you elsewhere. Alright, I'm searching for a man named Farod. Have you seen him? I would know why you seek to collect the Farod. I wish to speak with him. As do I, he has made such a thing difficult. He speaks through other men, and Morik falls silent for a moment. And two men speak through other men, little is said and much is lost. Why do you want to speak with Farad? The collector Farad has brought many corpses to the mortuary of late. One must ask where these bodies are from. Tell me more about the bodies. Some are recent dead. They still have their last moments in their eyes. Many more bodies are centuries dead. The dust of ages lies upon their bones. One must ask where these bodies are from. Well, perhaps I could find out where these bodies are from. How would you do such a thing? Hmm, I would track down Farod and ask him. If you spoke with the collector Farod and returned with his answers, you will have done a great service for the dustman. Find where the dead he brings to us are from and you will be rewarded. Very well, I will find Farod, speak to him, and find out where these dead bodies he brings you are from. Emmerich nods, your path is our path. Return here when you have the collector's far of collector Farod's answers. Can you tell me where he is? It is not known to me where the collector Farod is. He hides from the eyes of the dustman. I would seek other collectors and ask them your questions. Alrighty, so let's see. Maybe he can give us a few quests. Um, do you wish to sign the dead contract? What is it exactly? In exchange for 50 copper comments, the dead contract gives the dustman faction the rights to your corpse of the death. Do you wish to sign the dead contract? No. Um, let's leave. Save and see what happens if we want to join them. I would like to join the Dustman faction. If you desire to join the Dustman faction, I will hear your request. Mm, you have misjudged me. I have no desire to join the Dustman faction. I merely believe what the Dustman believe. Very well. Do you know our philosophy? Yes. 
recited. The goal of all dustmen is to reach the true death, oblivion. This life as many that many cling to with their emotions and passions is a false one. As long as one clings to it, one will continually be reborn into it. One must divest themselves of emotion to escape this cycle. Do you believe it? Mm, not entirely. Belief may come with time's passing. Is your conviction so strong that our philosophy shall never have a... Is your conviction so strong that our philosophy shall never have a home in your mind? I would like to put my uncertainty to time's test. I will spend time among the dustmen, then examine my beliefs. Then it shall be tested. Speak with Initiate Noroki. He is here in the bar. Return when you have done what he has asked of you. Hmm. You know, I don't really want to join them. I just want to see whether they have any quests for me. Maybe I could do some quests for them without joining them. Because, well, this is not a faction I would join. Done. Where is this Noroki guy? Who are you? Copper eyes. Let's talk to you then. <coughs> you see a spindle thin dustman in dirty black robes. His stiff black hair springs forth from his skull like a crown of spikes, and his leper white skin is drawn sharply across his skull. He is frowning into his drink, mumbling to himself. Greetings. The dustman looks up, blinks once, then looks you up and down, studying you. As he studies you, he takes one of his spiked locks and points at himself with it. Norochi. Initiate. Dustman. Guard. I'm here about the posting outside. The dustman looks you up and down. Many troubles have I. Can help you. A mausoleum awakes. The dead walk. The dead disturbed. The dustman disturbed. Find out what disturbs the undead and copper coins will I pay. Very well, where's this Updated mausoleum? Updated my journal. Norochi nods. Mausoleum by Dustman Memorial. Go north and west from Black Monument. Go to Arch and semicircle over your heart with his finger to make. He wriggles his the index finger on his right hand. The m to the mausoleum go your will. I will look into it. Farewell. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe there's more. Do you see Norochi? He is pulling at one of his spikes of hair and using it to scratch a spot on his face. You can't help but think he look a lot better with dreadlocks. Oh. We can only get one quest at a time? Look into the matter of the mausoleum's walking dead. Norochi, a dustman I met in the gathering dust bar, told me of a mausoleum where the dead walk. He wanted me to look into the matter. He said the mausoleum entrance was north and west of the dustman memorial outside of the mortuary. He said I should go to the archway there Make a semicircle over my heart with my right index finger, then the entrance would open. If I can find a problem in the mausoleum and solve it, then I'll return to Norochi and let him know. Apparently that will open a portal. Let's talk to um, old Copper Eyes here. Before you is a tall, silent figure. He could easily pass for a statue, although the deep furrows in his face and brow make you wonder if the sculptor was a little too eager in defining the face with the chisel. He looks well over 50 years old, but exactly how much over 50 is hard to tell. As he slowly turns to look at you, you catch the dull sheen of copper in his eyes. Greetings. Old Copper Eye stares at you. His eyes are difficult to make out past the black well of his eye sockets but they look to have a coppery sheen about them. I have some questions. Copper eyes says nothing. Um, maybe, maybe we can pretend to uh, sign one of the contracts. Copper eyes makes the barest of knots and slowly reaches into his dustman robes with both hands. With his left hand he pulls forth a small bag of human skin. With his right hand he draws forth a piece of parchment folded around finger bone pen. The bag and the parchment are slowly laid on the table in front of you. Examine the bag. The bag is full of coppers. There looks to be about a hundred in there. 
pick up the parchment and examine it. It is a contract that entitles the dustman to take possession of the signer's body after he has passed beyond the eternal boundary. The signer in exchange receives a monetary sum from the dustman, agreed upon by at the time of signing. You assume the sum in the bag is the amount you will receive for signing the contract. Examine the parchment. It is a uh, con. Oh, we already had that. I've changed my mind. Farewell. Uh, Copper Eye says nothing, simply reaches for the bag and the parchment and draws them into the folds of his robe. Okay, leave it at that. I'm not signing any shit here. Awaiting death. What's up with you? Before you is a young dustman with stubble on his chin and dark circles beneath his eyes. He's staring at the wall with a somber expression. Greetings. The dustman doesn't look up. He stares straight ahead as if he is seeing something several leagues beyond the wall of the spa. Can I ask you some questions? The dustman doesn't respond. He keeps staring into the distance. Alrighty then, Morty hisses at you. Let's go, Chief. This dusty might as well be fertilizer. Fair enough. Let's get out of here. As you turn to leave, the dustman suddenly speaks, his voice barely a murmur. You have to strain to hear the words. You think he said something about wanting to die. What did you say? The boy's expression does not flicker. Do you want to die? Do we want to die? I don't know. I really don't know. Do you want to die? Yes. Why do you want to die? This experience, this existence is a mockery of life. I do not wish to continue this charade any longer. His face wrinkles in disgust. Why would anyone wish to remain in this foul city in the center of a multiverse that feeds on pain and hatred? Death is silent, comforting. Then why haven't you killed yourself already? I have been looking for a means to end my life. Will you kill me? Mm, yes. He sighs in relief, then pulls a bag out of his robe. It clinks as he places it in front of him. Do it now. I cannot wait any longer. <coughs> Hold on, I don't want your money. I want to know why you want to die. Um, okay, we already had that. Fine, I kill you. All right, close your eyes. He closes his eyes. Reach your hand around his neck and strangle him. You place your hands on his neck and you begin slowly to constrict. He gives a choked gasp and his eyes open wide. With a plaiding expression, he begins to claw at your hands. Release him. You release him and to your discomfort, you find yourself doing so reluctantly. The boy gasps for breath, coughing violently. Change your mind? The boy nods weakly. Look, next time you want to die, you better be damn sure because the next fellow might not stop when you ask him to. Now stop mopping around about life's misery when you obviously still want to be a part of it. The boy looks at you for a moment in silence, then he nods slowly, rubbing his neck. I didn't fulfill my terms of the agreement, so keep your money. The boy nods again and finally catches his breath. Very well. Thank you, sir, for giving me a fresh perspective. Don't thank me, just live. It insults the dead when you treat life carelessly. Farewell. Ooh, looks like my skills have increased. Oh, looks I'm like you've leveled. Nice! So, did we talk to everybody that has a name? Yes, we did. Do we have anything new? Um. Oh, yeah. Can you tell me about Amoric? That stone-faced old fool. I taught him, you know, and I used to hold the man in high regard. Then I woke up. He's a crusty old ghoul that sits here in his off hours to make sure the young, younger dustmen have a symbol of authority here in this bar. She mumbles, old vulture. Hmm, can you tell me about awaiting death? Awaiting death? Shh. 
that boy is, has half the sense of a jackass. He actually wants to die, and him so young too. I wish death would rattle his cage, teach him a few things. Well, it actually did. <laughs> Can you tell me about old copper eyes? Don't know much about that one. He's a strange blood. He never moves from that spot, never eats, never drinks, just waits. Makes me uneasy. Um, that's it. So, well, somebody leveled, I heard. Let's take a look. No, you didn't level. But you leveled. Um, let's see, you have 30 hit points. That's not enough. Looks like my skills have increased. Not enough. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Ooh, looks like my skills have increased. <laughs> One hit point? You gotta be kidding me, man. like my skills have increased seven okay I'm okay with seven um, good. did we get anything new hey what's eating you chief You said you're a Mimi, right, Morty? Yeah, a Mimi is a floating encyclopedia. You put information in, you get information out. Hmm, okay. How did you die, Morty? No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. Oh, we already had that. Um. We already had that. No, nothing new. Okay, so how about we call it the video and continue in the next one. So, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.